Hey everybody, this is Dave Mosher, producer for Discovery Space at space.discovery.com. That is the Discovery Channel's official website all about space, and this is your weekly wrap-up where I take you through the three biggest things that happened in space last week. Now you guys should probably click over to my blog, Space Disco. I'm going to be throwing tons of stuff at you and I can't pos possibly cover all the ground I want to in this video. And so you can get to it, it's at blogs.discovery.com forward slash space underscore disco. So go ahead and click over there, maybe you're on your iPhone, your iPod, iTunes, i whatever. Uh, you can get to the blog that way. If you're on YouTube, it's a bit easier. Click that More Info button to your right. Drop-down menu will happen, and then within that, you'll find a link to the blog. That said, let's get right into the wrap-up. You guys remember last week I was telling you about this, the Kepler Space Telescope. This is a telescope designed to look for these, Earth-like planets. And, in fact, we haven't actually found one yet. The only Earth we know of is our own. So, this thing is going to... Look for Earth-like planets across the universe, actually within a nearby neighborhood, about 3,000 light years. But uh, I'm just really happy that it didn't end up here like it did, like the Orbiting Carbon Observatory did the other week. So it's actually in space. It's going to happen. And okay, so let's back up a bit. How is it going to find Earth-like planets? It's going to stare down 100,000 stars for three and a half to six years, depending on how the, the mission gets extended. But at least three and a half years, it's going to stare at 100,000 stars. And what it's looking for is a planet in just the right place, passing in front of the star and dropping the light level. So it's sort of eclipsing that star from light years away, and we're going to be able to see it with Kepler. It's really sensitive. I think a statistic is it could see somebody turning off their porch light from space, which is mind-blowing. Uh, but yeah, this thing is probably going to find, scientists think, 50 Earth-like planets. So planets that are on a year. Uh, orbit and they're about the size of Earth. It's going to find 185 that are on a year orbit and about 30% larger. This is all estimates. We have no idea and this is what Kepler's for, but that's really cool. We may have a backup planet uh, being found pretty shortly here. So that's the first bit of news. Second bit of news is about this. Actually, about what took it. This is a three dimensional map of the moon's surface taken by the Chang E1 spacecraft, which is China's one of China's first orbiting lunar satellites. And what they did, you know, the spacecraft was at the end of the life, so they spiraled it into the moon and it did this. It smashed into the surface. Uh, that's pretty typical, actually. Uh, the European Space Agency did that with their SMART-1 lunar orbiter, and the thing is, is they told everybody. So everybody aimed their telescopes at the site this thing was supposed to impact, and they got great pictures of it, did all kinds of great science, China is very secretive and they didn't tell anybody, so we don't really have any pictures of it. Which is really unfortunate because if we all work together, we could have more cool science and learn more about space. And I would have cool images to show you guys on this video, but I don't, so I'm sorry. Uh, third bit of news is concerning this. This is Node 3, which is a really boring name for a space laboratory that uh, NASA wants to put on its space station sometime in the next year or two here. Um, so, they're launching a contest to name it. It's only the second, I think, public naming contest for uh, one, of the, one of the nodes on the space station. So yeah, they're launching a contest, and one of their top picks right now is Serenity. These are ones they picked because they like to control everything. NASA is just a bunch of control freaks. So they pick four names they like. One of them is Serenity. Battlestar Galactic fans are, of course, freaking out because they want the thing named Serenity. But somebody has stepped up to the plate here. And that guy is Stephen Colbert, and he says, I want a piece of that space station. So he has started a campaign to rename this Node 3 Colbert. And in fact, he's the number one write-in result on the site. If you go to my blog, Space Disco, you can click the link and see it for yourself. But I would definitely advocate Stephen Colbert naming that node, because NASA is so lame. I know they're going to, even if he's number one, even if he gets a million votes and the other, other things get like 100,000, they're going to pick the one I got 100,000 just because it's named Colbert and they don't like that. So NASA's lame, vote for Colbert, I support him entirely. And I'm going to cheat a little bit, this is the fourth bit of news I guess, but this week on the site, space.discovery.com, make sure you click there, we have a wide angle, which is our weekly package on galaxies. So you guys can look at tons of pictures, we have a top 10 galactic mysteries, some How Stuff Works articles, all kinds of great stuff that you can dive headfirst into. So yeah, go to the site, space.discovery.com, and I'll see you there. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>